Okay, Wandering Winder here starting a new series um, in the Dominion strategy list, I guess. Uh, we're talking about openings. So I know I promised to do advanced Dominion strategy at some point, and I guess this is kind of starting in on that. Um, uh, there are a lot of aspects to advanced Dominion strategy, and a lot of them have to do with, for instance, end game play, and it's really hard for me to make a generic video about that, so I'm still trying to think of ways. But openings are something that we can do um, a little bit more abstractly. Um, and that's the, the goal of this series. So this series, um, most of the series is going to be we're going to look at one particular card and its impact on how it's going to affect the judgments and decisions you make in openings. Um, but this particular video, we're going to go more general to try to cover the big broad strokes and um, to try to cover the most common scenarios that aren't particular to any particular card, right? Um, so let's start big picture and let's start talking big picture. And what is the most big picture is general strategy and planning ahead. So how much do you need to plan ahead in the opening? And I think the answer is usually a little bit, but not a lot. Um, so you usually want to know broad strokes, what is the general strategy that I'm going for? What do I mean by that? I mean, am I trying to get some money, take provinces, and end the game before somebody who builds bigger can catch up? Or am I trying to get deck control, uh, draw my deck every turn and then build up my payload and go from there? Or is it something else, right? Is there some combo that's on the board that's going to just blow the rest of it away, right? Beggar Guild Hall or Groom Gardens or something like that, right? So you need to know usually which of those paths you're going down. It's very helpful because if I'm trying to do the first thing where I'm just getting a bunch of money, grabbing some provinces and hanging on, then I need to know the best way what I'm looking, I know that the, what I'm looking to do is to find the best way to ramp up my payload immediately right from the get-go. Um, if it's the second path where I'm trying to get deck control and then build up, then I need to know the quickest way to get deck control effectively. And if it's the third way, well, I need to know what combo I'm looking for um, and just usually go for that straight away. Um, but sometimes it's position myself for that, right? Um, and there are other options besides just those three. Those are just three that I mentioned. Those are three of the more common ones, uh, particularly the first two, particularly getting deck control. But for instance, if I've determined what I want to do here is get deck control, I don't need to figure out the whole rest of the game. I don't need to figure out, and then I'll pile out on these three piles, right? Usually, if you're getting deck control, you just need to know, oh, I'm going to get deck control, and figure out the best way to do that. And then once you get close to getting deck control, you can figure out, what am I going to do for payload? What do I need to do about piles? Particularly because for something like a pile out, it's going to matter what your opponent has done. It's going to matter how your draws have gone, right? So you don't, I, I, I think it's easy to think too far ahead on those things. So you'd usually just want to say, okay, I need to get deck control. What's the best way to do it? Um, knowing more about what you eventually want to do down the line can be helpful. For instance, right, if you realize that you want your plus buy to come from Baron, then maybe you're more likely to hang on to an estate than you otherwise would. But those tend to be some pretty small factors. Um, and I, I tend to not worry too much about them. So know the big broad strokes of what you want to do. And then beyond that, it usually doesn't matter too much because there is usually just one relatively clear, this is the best thing for me to get deck control, or this is the best thing for me to uh, you know, build up my money density, or this is the combo we need to go for, something like that, right? There's, there's one or two sub-objectives uh, that are short-term objectives that just become clear and dominate everything else. Um, beyond that, I want to talk about the two most common things that you want to be doing in an open and an opening, um, which is get deck control and increase your payload. Um, getting deck control, 
got to be the most common goal of an opening. Increasing your payload is a very common goal, usually to hit a price point, usually five, um, which is sometimes to get deck control, right? If the all the thinning on the board is at f costing five, then you want to be able to hit five so that you can get the thinning, so that you can get deck control, right? Um, so it could be that you've determined I'm going for deck control here, but the thinning is all sentries and junk dealers and recruiters and, and, and sanctuaries. So I want to hit five fast so that I can get those cards. Um, but it, that matters, right? It matters why you want to hit five. If you want to hit five for that reason, then you're going to be a little more likely to go for something that hits five while also not being too harmful to your deck control or being more harm more helpful to your deck control right something that draws cards and hits five is a little bit nicer than something that hits five and adds stop cards to your deck um alternatively maybe you're trying to hit five so that you can just pound a million mountebanks or, or some very powerful attack in that case drawing cards is usually i mean it's still nice to draw cards whatever but it's it's going to be less important and just hitting five over and over and over and being able to play that mountebank over and over and over again is more important. So those are subtle differences. Um, there's a few classes of cards that commonly pop up and that I'm not going to look at each one individually when I'm looking at the, the rest of this series that's covering openings um, because they're just too common and, and they lump together. And those classes are moats, peddlers, and silvers. What do I mean by that? Moats, I mean a card that draws two cards, um, like moat does. Uh, by a peddler, I mean a card that gives you plus a card, plus an action, and plus a money, like peddler does. And by silvers, I mean a card that doesn't draw any cards and gives you two money, like silver. For each of these categories, there are a bunch of cards that fall into that category, right? There's not just moat. There's also um lackeys there's several other things that draw too right lab could theoretically be a moat for turns three and four uh, laboratory laboratory however you want to pronounce it silvers there's a ton of these that you can get in the early game right you've got silver you've got monument you've got fortune teller you've got cut purse whatever cut purse i should say uh is a th a third class of things that you may often want to do in an opening, which is attack your opponent. Um, but that is going to be very dependent on the particular card in question, right? The cut purse attack isn't replicated by another attack. The militia attack isn't replicated by too many other attacks that you can get in the opening, um, The especially that also give you two money. And there are other goals that you often have in the opening too. For instance, page. Page is, gives you a goal of, I want to move myself up the page line. Uh, peddlers, opening peddlers, there's tournament, there's poacher, right? There's multiple different kinds of peddlers that you might want to, fishermen, you might want to open, right? So there's a number of each of these categories of cards, and often you'll want to do some combination of those and, and cards that have other effects as well, um, right? You want to get a page, you want to get a potion, or you want to get a, a smithy, or you want to get some kind of a, I don't know. There's all kinds of cards that are good in openings. You know, uh, trashers, thinners, are a huge class of cards you want to get in the opening. You very often want to open ambassador. You very want to often want to open chapel. Um, those aren't going to help you hit five, but they're really, really good. So uh, what I'm about to talk about is how moats, silvers, and peddlers help you to hit five, how likely they are, and all of that. But keep in mind, you have other goals very often in the opening as well. So let's start with silvers. Um, silver, the actual card silver is always available. And on a 3-4, silver silver is, uh, well, a, probably as common an opening as anything else, just because it's always available and it's not horrible, although usually you're going to do something else. Right, even if it's just silver and some, you know, silver plus. Um, but often it's it's going to be some other card because there are a lot of good cards to open, so it's usually not going to be silver, silver. 
But the combination of two silver or silver-like cards, like a monument is a silver-like card, it gives you two money, um, gives you a 91.2% chance of hitting five at least once on turns three and four. It gives you a 14.9% chance of hitting five twice on turns three and four. That's on turn three and on turn four. It gives you a 42.4% chance of hitting six, which you might want to do that could be a price point that you want to hit for crop rotation, for instance. Other things, alter. You might also want to hit six rather than five. Um, so that's a silver and a silver. But if you open with two of those, keep in mind, you're going to have two cards that miss your shuffle, um, which I've taken into account when I'm generating those percentages. But my point is, you're going to end up drawing on turn five, two cards from your turn three, four shuffle, right? Um, so those are usually going to be worse cards than once I've hit the five, I want to be able to draw the five. So that's a slight drawback. Um, let's move on to a, the Peddler situation. So Peddler Silver gives you a 91.8% chance of hitting five at least once. So that's a fraction, just over half a percent more than, um, than the Silver Silver case. So you're very slightly more likely to hit five at least once. You only have an 8.2% chance of hitting five twice, so that's a good bit less. And you have a 32.2% chance of hitting six or more, um, which is also a good bit less. So in general, um, let's also talk about the peddler is going to draw you a card. So you only have one card from that shuffle, the turn three, four shuffle, that you have to um, draw on turn five. So that's a difference there. Um, I think in general it's preferable to open with a peddler and a silver than two silvers, but the slight differences you can look at um, might make you think otherwise, right? If the five that you want to get is something that you want to hit just five again and again and again and again for, I don't know, the coven is the only thing on the board and you just want to hit coven a million times, then maybe, or Minion, or I don't know, Minion, Coven probably aren't even the best examples. I don't know. There's probably some examples of fives, maybe Mountebank. You just want to hit five an awful lot. And if you just want to hit five an awful lot, then maybe it's better to go Silver Silver than Silver Peddler. Um, maybe. It's, I think, usually not the case, but uh, it's not inconceivable. Um, on the flip side, if you just want to make sure you hit five at least once, then the peddler looks a lot better, right? Say I, the only five I want to hit five for is trading post because it's going to thin me and I only need to hit it once. Second trading post is usually pretty terrible, right? And in that case, I very much prefer to get uh, the peddler variant, you know, whether it's poacher or tournament or what have you, than the silver. And obviously the individual aspects of the card are also going to be important, right? If Poacher is going to be an Oasis three turns in, well, then maybe I don't want Poacher so much. If Tournament's going to be winning me prizes, then I want maybe I want Tournament even more, you know, whatever. Um, and I guess I should also note that when we're talking about hitting fives, uh, sometimes there's a good five on the board, but you don't need to hit it in the opening, like Groundskeeper. Groundskeeper is a great card. You might want a ton of it. That doesn't mean you want it on turn three and four. You usually don't. Usually it's a card to get later on because all it basically does for you is score points. Um, so yeah, that's worth keeping in mind as well. So we've covered silvers, we've covered peddlers. Let's cover moats. Moats that draw two, um, those give you no chance of hitting five twice on turns three and four. You only have nine money in your deck. Nine can't hit five twice. But they give you the best chance of hitting five at least once, right? So that's 94.9% chance. That's a few percent better than if you went silver, silver, or even peddler, silver. And that's because if you draw the moat, then five and four, you, you're drawing all 10 cards in your deck. You can't split nine into two pieces where one of them isn't at least five. So the only way you can miss five is if the moat misses the shuffle and also you get some not great luck on your other split of either hitting four and four or three and four again if your silver also misses. Obviously 
you don't want to open moat monument very often because uh, if there's terminal collision, uh, and this is also true of like monument monument, if you could, you wouldn't want to open very often because terminal collision are going to drastically hurt those chances of hitting five. Um, but one terminal is, is usually safe, um, depending on how many terminals you can afford to take later on. That's that's one other run of the reasons to plan ahead a little bit more. Um, I should also note that if you're opening silver nothing or silver in a cantrip like page, you have um, some chance of hitting five still. Uh, it's a lot worse, but it's still not horrible, right? You're 60.6% chance to hit five at least once, and you still have a 15.2% chance to hit six once. So basically, long story short, uh, the moat is going to dry you the most. You're going to see the cards that you buy on turn three and four more often if you open with a moat than if you don't, uh, than if you open with silvers. If you open with silvers, you get more overall fives, although you're less likely to get at least one, and you have more digging to do because you have those 11th and 12th cards from your turn and three and four shuffle that you need to draw on turn five. And Peddler is in between. So yeah, usually I think it, it, I mean, it obviously depends on the exact cards. Mode itself is usually not a great open because it's terminal and terminal space is going to be a consideration. Terminal collision or drawing stuff dead is going to be a consideration. And the advantage it gives you over the other options is usually not hugely large. Um, on the other hand, if your moat is something that can mitigate that, like a lackeys, you're a lot more inclined to want to open with it compared to a silver. Um, one silver is often good. Peddlers are usually very good to open with. Um, and that's, yeah, that's the generality of it. Um, but you need to figure out, you know, what it is that you're doing because it's actually quite often that there's something else going on besides just what I've talked about in this video. And that'll be the subject of the remainder of the series. But uh, yeah, I mean, even here we can see, oh, university, I might want to open potion page. I might want to do some pursue things so that I can hit the page more quickly and move it up, right? It matters whether you're trying to get a lot of copies of a five or whether you're trying to race to one copy of a five. So just there's all these things to keep in mind. Um, I'm going to end the video now. I've been going on for quite a long time here, but this is just the basic openings of what to be thinking about in um, in the opening. And we'll move on uh, in the remaining videos in this opening series to talk about more advanced concepts that deal with particular cards and landscapes. Thanks for watching.